Welcome to Job Sharing and Beyond, the Future of Work podcast that goes beyond the traditional 9 to 5. I am Karen Tischler, speaker, consultant, and host of the show, where we hear from global experts every other week to discover innovative solutions and tips on how to remain a relevant employer in the future. I'm so appreciative to welcome Dr. Anjali Bansal to my podcast show today. Dr. Anjali Bansal is a professor and an active researcher in the area of human research management and organizational change. She works with Micah Ahmedabad, which is India's first strategic marketing and communication school. Ahmedabad is India's first heritage city as declared by UNESCO. Anjali has earned her PhD from the Faculty of Management Studies at the University of Delhi. She was one of the youngest PhD holders of the university. Anjali holds her MBA in Human Research Management and her Bachelor in Biotechnology. Anjali is the subject matter expert of mergers and acquisitions and engages regularly with the big corporates to bridge the gap between theory and practice. Anjali's main contribution lies in contemporary work practices to ensure an engaging and highly productive work environment for a diverse set of employees. Over the years, Anjali has conducted in-depth research on various contingent workforces ranging from Indian educated housewives, retired professionals, part-time employees to LGBTQ workers with the objective to not just only create attractive work opportunities for them but to also provide them a stimulating work environment. At present, Anjali focuses on contemporary employment practices and thus explores the job sharing, flexible work options and gig economy in depth. Anjali constantly collaborates for her research with professors in the universities abroad like George Washington, Villanova, Florida State, De Montfort, CEIBS, Milano B. Coca and others. I apologize that the weather influenced the sound quality of our episode today. I will also add the transcript of our episode to the show notes. I am so excited to have Anjali on the show today. Thank you so much, Karen. It's um, uh, nice to be in your podcast and I look forward to a wonderful interaction with you. Thank you so much. Now, we have a lot of listeners from all over the world. So could you tell them where you're calling in from? And is there a particular favorite food or site in the area where you live? Oh, great. You asked about the city. So, um, um, so India is a very big and diverse country. And uh, the city where I am calling from is Ahmedabad. So it is Ahmedabad. So it actually is the part of Western region of India and it is the part of state Gujarat, Gujarat. So Ahmedabad is India's first world heritage city as declared by UNESCO in 2017. And it is also very rich in the architectural heritage. So about the famous food of Ahmedabad, people here has sweet tooth. So they love to eat anything which is sweet. So be it, you know, sweet dishes or even the snacks, the morning breakfast and snacks they uh, would like to eat, which is sweet. The most famous snacks which the people here eat are khamman and dhokla. So again, I repeat the word khamman and dhokla. Again, uh, this is spicy and sweet both. In addition, uh, Ahmedabad has a large population which is migrated from other parts of India as well. So do not wonder if you find a lot of restaurants serving South Indian dishes like masala dosa, idli sambar here, or you locate the roadside uh, stalls of pani puri on every street. So pani puri particularly is a dish from North India. Also, uh, apart from this, people eat different foods in different seasons and on different festivals. For example, uh, in winters, they eat undiyu, which is a kind of mixed vegetable. And in the early fall during Navratra, which is a festival here, they eat chana puri and halwa. 
while summer is witnessed by food which gets served with varieties of buttermilk which is also good for your health considering the kind of heat we experience in the summer season here so undoubtedly ahmedabad has a very rich culinary heritage as well yeah that sounds so tasty i've never been to india but just listening to all of this and i love indian food i definitely love to come and visit you should now um anjali you are an assistant professor at mica and mm -hmm. so your current research among other areas is on flexible work culture in organizations as well as job sharing as a tool to women empowerment i'm curious how did you decide to focus on these topics yeah so uh, karen very rightly you pointed about the two areas of research which i do women uh, empowerment and employment and the flexible work culture so i think i'll start with the uh, why my research is on employment options for women because it's very close to my heart so if you look at the india's population to this date india's population is 1.3 billion and by 2050 it is estimated that india's population will be increased by 323 millions more and it will become the most populous country in the world leaving china behind so imagine the kind of uh, you know population we will have now look yeah. at some of the women statistics women constitute close to 48 uh, pop percent population of india but only 20% of them are in the mainstream workforce uh, and you'll be surprised to note uh, that in last many years so for comparison i'll give you the statistics of 2006 in 2006 mm -hmm. uh the women participation in the main labor force was 37% but in 2019 it has gone down to 18% hmm. the gender pay gap has risen to 23% but if you look at their participation in the informal housework it has grown to 93% so you see while the country as a whole was growing at a global platform the women participation and their working conditions were quite declining and deteriorating now let's look at some of the reasons why this is the case so first of all i think family so family constitutes a very integral part of a woman's life so whether she is in a full time job or she is in a part time job or she is not working at all taking care of the house and of the extended family members this is a primary responsibility of a woman in india second is the child care uh, so even though in the recent years the men have been very supportive so we have a big history of patriarchy but in the recent years we have witnessed men who were very supportive and they are willing to share the responsibilities uh, even of child care but uh, largely women has to manage it right so this mm -hmm. often creates a conflict for a woman on the issue of time so the time which uh, she spends on housework and child care versus the time she spends on the paid work so there is this um, ongoing dilemma in her head that the time she is spending on the workforce or on the paid work this is the time she has taken from child care so imagine the kind of you know mental trauma she goes through once she comes into the workforce because this this is how we have grown up this is how uh, we have been raised that you have to take care of the family and you have to take care of the kids so i think uh, mm -hmm. those were the burning issues which always caught my attention when it comes to women empowerment and their growth in this country having grown up in a small city i myself have seen my aunts my friends and my cousins going through this struggle and my intention was to always uh, support this potential workforce so um, i think that was the very idea with which i and my other colleagues um, long long ago like 6 7 years ago we started doing um, our first research on women empl em employment uh, and we came out with job sharing as a possible option of employment for these homemakers and i'm really really happy to see that over the years even the organizations have become quite open for this option so uh, that's a relief to know that the conditions of women is getting uh, actually better in in the last few years uh, and now talking about my second stream of research which is flexible work culture so um, india is still in a nascent stage to provide a prosperous and conducive work environment to the workforce quality of work life is really really questionable not just for women but for men for other genders for temporary and contract workers for every kind of workforce the quality of work life is really questionable 
So overall, as much as 77% of the companies, they provide some kind of flexible work uh, employment options. At least they claim that we provide flexibility, but it doesn't mean that they actually encourage it in their companies. It doesn't mean that bo bosses, uh, uh, you know, they do like those employees who take flexibility um, at the work. So it's really questionable. So in summary, uh, the idea of different streams of my research is to ensure that organizations are a better place to live, not only for different genders, caste and creed, but also for employees with different contract length and employment status. So I think these were my primary motivations behind these two streams of research. Yeah, over to you. Thank you so much, Anjali. It, it, you know, I'm really happy to hear that you are experiencing that over the last few years, job sharing is becoming something, uh, you know, that is maybe more widely known. And I'm you know, looking forward to um, go into more detail with the, you about that in a little bit. Um, sure. One of the um, presentations you have given was about the quality of work life. And yeah. in there, you talked about different forms of flexible work, among others, job rotation and job enrichment. And could you explain a little bit more what you mean by that? Uh, actually, thank you for reminding me of that. So um, one of my current research draws heavily from the concept of work-life balance. So um, it proposes options like telecommuting. So telecommuting telecom simply means that uh, you work from a distant location, which is particularly not your office. It could be your home, uh, which we largely call working from home. It could be some cafe. It could be some open space. So uh, telecommuting is one area where I research. Second is uh, uh, flex scheduling. It simply means that one uh, can work on their preferred hours of the day. Flex scheduling. Uh, another one is uh, uh, flexible work week. So it is a very, um, so people are uh, really taking up this option very frequently in India. So it simply means that you, uh, in India, you are required to work for five days a week. Now it is up to you what five days you choose according to your convenience and according to your family priorities. So flexible work week is another thing which is very, uh, you know, um, growing in India. So, um, but you'd be surprised to note uh, that one thing which has remained common in a uh, couple of my last research is that when people work from home, the boundaries between the work and the families, they get blurred. Yeah. Undoubtedly, uh, the flexibility helps people maintain the balance between personal and professional lives. But uh, because I want to talk about uh, some of the findings which are not there in this in the research as of now, so I have found that how uh, you know the boundaries between personal and professional gets blurred. Now imagine a situation that you are working from home, and your kids need you. Would you be able to postpone that situation? So uh, maybe no. Or imagine your boss rings you on an odd time and expects you to finish the work in the late night. Would you be able to say no? Uh, I think in India, it is very, very difficult to say no because India is very high on power distance dimension. So you know the mm -hmm. Hofstede culture model where power distance is one dimension. Power distance simply means that to what extent the bosses and the employees, they want to maintain a distance from each other. Right? It's the power distance. Mm -hmm. So India is very high on power distance. So saying no to a boss is uh, not acceptable. So, uh, and definitely you would be surprised to know that after these series of lockdowns, which happened after the corona situation, the hours employees spend on the work have gone considerably up. Now bosses do not really mind ringing the phones of their employees at the odd hours and expect that one is available to work in all of their conscious hours. So, hmm. uh, I think with this, uh, in my research, I just not only explore how the flexible work options can help bridge the gap between the work and family needs, but I also study the flip side. And this flip side is how employees may feel overburdened, disconnected, and alienated when they are set to work from home and organizations and their bosses do not take flexibility in the same spirit. So you're understanding. So even though they make flexibility as an option, uh, available for the employees, but then they would not encourage, as I mentioned in my earlier uh, response. So uh, I think this is a big dilemma for employees, even though the option is there, they might not take it. Because uh, one thing uh, which has prominently come out is, if you are out of sight of your boss, 
if your boss doesn't see you on daily basis working in front of him or her then it might create a perception that you are not working at all and then you would lose on promotion and growth opportunities as well so um, i think that, that is one more thing which i am studying on and the other results are quite encouraging so these are the phenomena which are really there yeah over to you yeah that's um definitely something you know i've been reading here as well is that you know boundaries are really tricky in a working from home situation right yeah so um when you published a study in 2018 you were talking about job sharing could be a solution for housewives to be able to return back to paid work and could you tell us more about that absolutely so um, it is that research which is very close to my heart and this is the first outcome of um, all of my efforts towards the women employment which i started studying years ago so um, i'll tell you this research has three fold objective one is to understand the bottlenecks of the women employment second to understand the available employment opportunities for them for the women who want to come back to the workforce and third to understand from women what status of employment they would prefer would they like to go for the full time employment or temporary or something else so it is also important to understand this from them only so uh, so this research starts with uh, outlining the reasons for women opting out the full time employment and the reasons could be household work kids care mm -hmm. and definitely kids care uh, lacks infrastructure in terms of availability and affordability of the day cares so it's still a very new concept in india people do not really trust others when it comes to taking care of their, their small kids so um, mm -hmm. and also so the availability is not very um, uh, humongous and mm -hmm. also the day cares are expensive the offices uh, there are not a large amount of offices which have crash facilities there so mm -hmm. that's i think one reason um, women prefer to opt out of the main workforce the other thing is um, india is highly collectivist culture so and they have strong family values we indians have strong family values so mm -hmm. elderly parents are taken care of by their kids we don't really have old age homes until unless somebody uh, doesn't have you know kids to take care of them people don't really go to old age homes we don't have okay. old age homes so of uh, taking care of the elderly pa parents or elderly people of the family this is our responsibility so apparently after marriage and after women have kids it adds significantly to her unpaid work this she has to do and in this process apparently if uh, you know the partner the spouse is understanding but one of them one of the partners will have to take up the role to manage the house and taking care of kids and elders and uh, women usually are understood to be the one who will take this role mm -hmm. uh, so i think this is another reason apart from this um, uh, one reason we identified is that after they remain in the family sister for long, for uh, you know so many years uh, they start feeling that they don't have the right skills to come back to the workforce so lack of right certifications lack of right competence and expertise is one more reason um, you know they feel that they are not fit right fit for the company if they want to come back after 10 years or 15 years also um, in india if families are well to do they would not allow their women to go outside and work for money because they think if it is just you know for money why do you need to go outside we we already have it oh. but i think uh, Uh, financial independence won't help if it doesn't come with the empowerment you see financial independence is just not the one thing it when you work and go outside to work you have the freedom to make decisions you have the freedom to make choices and right. i believe uh, pursuing a meaningful and a fulfilling career can really help a women feel empowered so uh, that has been missing well with all all said and done a woman aspires to make a living for herself in india she wants to be independent not just financially though so um, with this we thought of why not to check from the managers and organizations themselves if they are willing to get these women back to the mainstream workforce they are educated they are willing it's just that they don't have the full day to contribute to the work 
so why not to explore the job sharing option where two or more women could be hired on one job you already know about job sharing i have uh, been hearing the earlier podcast um, and i think people have already talked about job sharing a lot so i will not really talk uh, much about you know job job sharing but mm -hmm. uh, you know the concept so two or, two or three people can work on one job so in this process a woman would be required to spend only a few hours a day on the job or maybe just two or three days per week and i think this experiment went very well for us as researchers um, i received very enthusiastic response from the managers and the organizations so at the end of the study this job sharing turned out to be a potential employment option for these women so uh, apart from this by the way job sharing has also additional benefit uh, not just for women for others as well it allows one to pursue other vocations as well if you have some other interests and hobbies you can also do that with job sharing because you have ample amount of time with you right it also mm -hmm. allows one to work with uh, two or more organizations at one point in time which a lo mm -hmm. lot of freelancers are doing in india nowadays so this way uh, they get a hold of the culture of different companies which will help them make a choice later on and apart from this uh, job sharing is not something which is a temporary work it is a work which holds you accountable as well so one mm -hmm. needs to deliver also so it is not something somebody is doing charity on someone one is accountable for the work as well and this also helps one to remain competitive and updated at the workplace so i think this research went very well and we came out with very interesting findings as you talking about job sharing are there some examples you know you could give on a sort of is is there something even like on a top sharing level like you know on a managerial level that you have either encountered or or read about in india um so top sharing not particularly but uh, yes mm -hmm. in the recent years um, all big and small organizations they are exploring this option and i can mm -hmm. give you some names of bigger companies like hindustan oh, yeah. river Hindustan Unilever is one of the big companies of India. Cadbury India, Tata, oh, wow. so that Tata Group, it has lot of companies uh, inside. So mm -hmm. I think um, I believe most of these organizations they have some kind of job sh sharing option available for their employees, and not just for women, but for other uh, uh, gender employees as well. Uh, oh wow! Apart from this, uh, a complete range of startups. They are also very flexible when it comes to employment. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, of course the companies in india have a long way to go uh, but uh, from where i see soon organizations will be more open to this option the organizations which are not today soon they will adopt because the companies like hindustan unilever and cadbury they always have been the torch bearers and then they always have uh, you know shown the world shown the indian companies what are the right practices what are the best practices so i see that in the coming years uh, job sharing would be much more uh, prevalent option available for uh, every kind of workforce anjali in europe there are for example intergenerational as well as um cultural job sharing um opportunity for example somebody might arrive from a company from abroad and has job related or technical skills but might not have quite the language skill for that particular country and um so that's why a job sharing opportunity is very helpful does something like this exist in india already as well oh i like this idea karin very much uh in india since regional diversity it is huge uh, we speak more than 18 mainstream languages we have more than hundreds wow. of languages which people speak but 18 are the mainstream languages so it seems that it would be very appropriate idea to train and support women not just women but other employees as well in these areas because if people move from north india to south india the culture changes a lot the language changes everything changes the expectations from behavior and attitude changes so uh, but i'm not aware of any company in india but is particularly doing so yet i can share um, the example of one very trusted and valued it organization it is a part of tata group and the name of this it company is tcs tcs so uh, this is a organization uh, which uh, on a large number sends its employees to the client locations which particularly are in us 
and in many parts of Europe and UK. Mm -hmm. So a large number of these employees move to these locations with their immediate family members, like maybe parents and uh, maybe their spouses. Uh, at the same time, the parents and spouses, they may not have any formal employment options there. And also they don't have their, any social system there because they are new to that uh, geography and culture. Mm -hmm. So in order to involve uh, the spouses and the family members, immediate family members of these employees, what this company has done is they have come up with a, a sister um, initiative. They call this initiative Maitri. Maitri is a Sanskrit word and its meaning is friendship. So uh, uh -huh. what this initiative does is it tries to involve the parents and the spouses of those employees who are abroad and who particularly have nothing to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is an initiative which is started by the wife of the CEO of this company. So under this initiative, uh, they can be put on different kinds of training programs. Under this initiative, they could be put on different type of vocations and hobbies. And they are also encouraged to meet the people who are, you know, in their geography so that they uh, get sort of uh, hands of this culture and geography and that new country. So I think uh, not particularly for employees, but for the family and spouses, uh, this company has been doing so. So I don't know if this answers your question, but I could think of this organization. I, I think that's a really interesting idea because it really helps to create, you know, more of a community. And so, I, I, yeah, I think that's awesome. Thank you. So um, now in my research, I found out that in India, there are now at least 25 companies that have return programs for female professionals, as yeah. well as one academic program for female professionals returning back to the paid workforce. And um, while it has been a very popular thing um, in the US, the return trips, mm -hmm. um, thanks to Ivy Launch, founded by Carol Fishman Cohen in Canada, this still is not that common, the return ships, especially here on the West Coast. Has there been any study on what impact these Indian return programs have had on societal and the economic status of returners? And are you aware of any return ships that may offer maybe job sharing or part-time or flexible options? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in my knowledge, the job sharing option it itself is a very new uh, uh, thing and just started growing in India. So I don't see if any, uh, you know, consulting firm or any organization has already come up with the report of telling the success of these returnship programs. But then definitely I can share about uh, a couple of returnship programs, which I am aware of. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that returnships are the full time paid internships for adults right. who have been out of exactly. the workforce. So some of the companies which offer this program are um, MG Motor India. MG means Morris Garages, Motor India. So it has mm -hmm. this program called Drive Her Back. Drive Her Back. So it's a unique program that enables experienced and qualified women to return to the workplace with dignity and pride. So, and the idea is not to, uh, you know, give them their dignity back and pride back. The idea is to also create a diverse pool for the company itself because they won't compromise on the talent when it comes to the talent of the uh, workforce. So they won't compromise mm -hmm. on that. So other organization is IIT Madras. It is called Indian Institute of Technology Madras. It is one of the premier um, engineering institution of India. So mm -hmm. uh, very re recently in the month of March, they launched a career back to women, career back to women initiative and the idea of this initiative is to skill a woman who aspires to return to a technical profession after a break in their mm -hmm. career. So they mm -hmm. plan to offer up to 150 hours of training to skill these women on their journeys back to their careers. So similarly, there are other organizations like uh, VM, VMware, Women Who Code. So, and then they particularly focus on providing the technical, um, you know, opportunities for women or soft skills training for women. So they focus on different domains. I think apart from returnships, there are other organizations as well who are into free online training spaces. That sounds really interesting. And I, to me, 
it yeah, it gives me a lot of hope to hear about all these new ideas and um, ways to really help women to return. Now, as we had touched a little bit on um, COVID-19, as the crisis is going on, many of the articles and studies have shown that women end up taking on much more of the unpaid care work um, than men. And in cases such as, for example, the US, full-time working women are actually having to opt out of the work due to the mental load of working full-time, doing the homeschooling and the care work. And I have now seen people suggesting that flexible working is a solution like job sharing, which, you know, until before COVID was never really talked about very much at all, I felt, in the U.S. or in Canada. So what is the situation like in India related to COVID? And are there also potentially more innovative solutions people are coming up with because of the mental load situation? Uh, absolutely, you are right. So the situation is not very different in India as well. So yes, with lockdown, uh, not just women, but men are, men are also working from home full time. Uh, women are responsible for managing homes and people. They are also doing homeschooling because even the schools and colleges, they are shut. So definitely the workload has uh, increased for women. So uh, definitely job sharing is one potential option. And irrespective of COVID situation, working from home is going to be a one uh, possible solution for such kinds of problems going forward in the future. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll talk about this organization called Shared Pro. Shared Pro. So it's a Vadodara based organization. Vadodara is 120 kilometers away from Ahmedabad. So it's mm -hmm. a startup. So this startup is doing the matchmaking between the candidates who are interested in the job sharing options and the companies who are willing to hire them. So not necessarily it is serving only women, but it is serving for uh, males as well. So right. at present, they already uh, have 10 plus organizations which are willing to uh, you know, hire these employees who want to work on job sharing basis. But by the end of this year, they claim to add 20 more um, in their portfolio. So um, I think job sharing is picking up and working from home uh, will remain very relevant, very relevant going forward. That's, I, you know, I, I really like this because there are so many bad things because of COVID-19 and hearing something like this to me is like the silver lining <laughs> that there could be potential positive societal changes towards more flexible work that in the end will help gender equality get, you know, increased or get closer to a parity than we would have maybe thought a year ago. So that that sounds very promising. Thank you. Now, um, then one thing also, as we are talking about this, and again, on the positive side, it sounds in some of the studies and um, surveys that have been taken is that men actually have become more involved mm -hmm. in care work, homeschooling, while everybody is stuck at home. So I've read that this experience really has become more, uh, you know, less of a career um, problem or stigma attached to men actually wanting to take care more of children. And also like secret parenting has been removed much more because you see little kids showing up in Zoom calls yes. all the time. So now um, in a way, this hopefully suggests that there could be more of a long-term shift towards more flexible working and more care work balance. And um, so what's the situation in India about that? Uh, let me tell you, it's a wonderful question. So um, to answer to this question, I'll share about my experience um, of doing a particular research, which I started doing only recently. So um, mm -hmm. for this particular research, I got the opportunity to uh, interview the senior most leadership of the organizations. Uh, and these organizations uh, range from traditional government public sector companies to the most con contemporary startups. So all types of organizations, mm -hmm. I, I interviewed the senior leadership. So the one common finding across the companies has been that for long, 
the organizations, especially the government companies, because they have been traditionalist for a long time. So these companies, they have overlooked the importance of flexibility, particularly mm -hmm. working from home option. So one reason could be this high power distance, which I already talked about. So Indian, uh, Indian culture necessitates one to closely work with his or her boss in the office. Right. right. But in with the recent lockdown condition and after experiencing uh, allocating working from home, the employers have understood the importance of uh, it, not just in terms of fulfilling the work requirement, but also cultivating much more satisfied, interested employees. Because if you as employer are able to trust your employees that they will work from home, even though you are not overseeing their work, then uh, you will also have employees back who will trust you more. Right. So uh, India is not a country where uh, elders or kids could be left on someone else's care for at least next 25 years. I already told you. So we can't trust people for our kids and elders. And I think this phenomenon will remain the way it is today. For next 25 years, I don't see a lot of old age homes and a lot, lot of daycares will come into picture. Daycares will come because women, uh, they want to come back to work. But uh, mm -hmm. people will not trust them much. And this will remain the primary responsibility of the um, men and women of the family so mm -hmm. i think with organizations being open for flexible work culture uh, this will really really help a men to play more central role in managing home and family right so and right. it would be a one more step towards the gender equality i told you men are already willing uh, to support a woman especially the mm -hmm. men of uh, big cities and big uh, you know from big organizations who are exposed to that culture, especially from the West. So they are willing, but they might not have time. But with this working from home option, uh, they would play a further integral and central role in managing the home and family. I, I really hope so too. And it's been really, really interesting to hear all the different innovative ideas from the different organizations and things I simply didn't know about India. Now, I could talk with you forever, Anjali, but we are coming to an end. And so is there anything that we did not address today that you would like to talk about? I did realize that I did not talk much about uh, women entrepreneurs. So um, mm -hmm. I think uh, there has been an incredibly increasing phenomenon of women entrepreneurship where women are coming up with their own business ideas and with their own businesses. So um, I believe in a big populated country like India, creating and supporting an infrastructure to promote women entrepreneurs, it would be a very, very good start to give these women a platform. So you'd be surprised to note that in India, the women of lower middle class strata, they are much more independent and self-reliant with they being into their Griha Udyog. So Griha Udyog again is a Hindi term and uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't have English translation, but it simply means a business which can be operated from the house. So you okay. see uh, a lot of these women, uh, the women from the lower middle class families, so they are involved in making pickles and papads making jams and ketchups, snacks and uh, candies, arts and handicrafts, carpets and candles, and much more. So they have their um, own business units, smaller ones, but then they have their own business units. So, um, I mean, one should just read of their success stories. Some of these business names are legit Papad, which has really, really grown uh, like anything in India. It is the name, and it was started by a group of women only. The another organization is Jaipur Rugs. So Jaipur Rugs makes carpets and these carpets are made by the women's of the villages. And these carpets are sold uh, outside India in uh, you know uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, Indian rupees. So some mm -hmm. of these businesses have been quite successful. So, uh, and also apart, apart from uh, these manufacturing units, some of these women are into you know opening their play schools, freshers, they, are, they also open the small enterprises. So I think uh, women entrepreneurs is, uh, entrepreneurship is something which um, one can look as a possible uh, opportunity and a possibility for a woman because we have for long see to what extent glass ceiling still exists. Even though a woman can make her way to the organization, but uh, the, the already prevalent practices, the glass ceiling, which is not just in India, but it is across in all the countries. 
it is difficult to break some of those things. Uh, so in, in a situation like this, women entrepreneurship could really pick up um, as a growing option and can really help these women who aspire to make their own careers and be independent. Uh, I think that's it. Well, thank you so much, Anjali. That sounds really, really inspiring and very hopeful. Now, how can people reach you? Oh, uh, the best way to connect with me is LinkedIn. I think if you search Anjali Bansal, um, A-N-J-A-L-I, B-A-N-S-A-L, and with the keywords F-M-S or M-I-C-A, you should see my profile. So I can alternatively be reached on my personal email ID, which is there with you, Karen. So if you feel it's suitable, you can share it with your listeners. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming onto the show, Anjali. It was a pleasure having you and learning so much and hearing about so many innovative ideas. I'm super appreciative. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen, for inviting me to this podcast. And I must tell you that um, even interacting with you and knowing about these other country practices was a very fulfilling experience for me too. And I hope that your uh, listeners uh, enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the show. We hope you gained valuable insights and new ideas. To keep listening to future episodes, please head over to iTunes or your favorite player and subscribe and give it a rating. We would very much appreciate a review and for you to share it on social media so more people can start innovating in how they offer employment. Until the next time, goodbye.